We had sailed overnight from Santiago Island, bearing north-northwest, but we could not get a good angle on the wind and keep a good course. So we tacked and pushed with the engine towards San Nicolau Island. We were to get in touch with Peter once we got in range with the VHF radio or cell phone service. But we were not even close to the island and this happened. My engine just stopped. I'm really bummed. Understand we were barely doing three and a half knots speed. God damn it! This was a major setback. Sucks. But I was prepared. I had diesel fuel stowed away. Stay positive, Alex. Stay positive. You'll figure it out. I must have ran out of fuel, so with a bit of difficulty, I put 40 liters of diesel to feed my Perkins engine. As well, I read my Perkins manual. It suggested that if I ran out of fuel, I'd have to purge the fuel injector system. But first, I took a nap to better prepare myself for the process. I was exhausted. Well, will you listen to that sweet sound? The sweet sound of my motor's running. I got it going, man. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. What happened is I ran out of gas and some air got into the um, fuel system. So I had to uh, purge the fuel system, purge the injectors, and I remember how to do that, and uh, I did it. And, uh, and now we're cruising and we're purring along. I'm so happy I could cry! <laughs> I was so happy I screamed like an American Idol pop star, and so relieved or distressed, I poured all my guts overboard. I puked freaking green, man. I even scared Wendy, but now she felt even worse in these conditions. The waves were crossed, there was no wind, the motor barely climbing the steep, surging walls of water. It was like a giant mosh pit, a never-ending, sickening carnival ride. Gallopin was like a bobbing bath toy. And then, a pot of hope came splashing forth. Dolphins. Yes, dolphins. They seemed to yell out at me. Come on, Alex. You're almost there, man. Follow us. You'll make it. The sun was setting and finally we could see the peak of the island in the distance. I was able to reach Peter and they had continued on. We were still several hours away, but in the shadow of that mountain waited the calm waters of Tarfal de San Nicolau. We would rest here for the night. A much needed rest for both of us, one where everything was still. Last night before going to bed, Wendy confessed that she had been really scared out there. Here we go. She remembered my scream of joy and felt a ray of hope in her twisted gut. Finally, late at night and once anchored in the bay, Gallopin was able to offer us a warm shower. The engine had heated the water to soothe our spoiled souls and wash the sickness away. So that early in the morning, we could continue our journey, renewed and ready for more. I took advantage of the calm here and made a breakfast snack. Soon Gallopin will be healing and crashing through the waves. Today, I took only two reefs on the mainsail. Wind was forecasted around 20 knots. It would hit us soon. I checked on Wendy. Yeah, vent two, now. She was preparing herself. And me and Gallopin were also prepared. The wind comes whipping around the island here, it creates a venturi effect. But with two reefs in the main and the Genoa fertile tight, Gallopin was cruising along confidently over the open ocean swell. The further we sailed from the coast, the wind settled to a perfect breeze, just below 20 knots.
sail north of the three uninhabited islands, Ia Razu, Ia Branco, and Ia Santa Luzia, and work our way around the north side of Ia de San Vicente and down the canal. Sailing windward of these islands is much different than leeward. The wind is constant, the swell is more regular, less short broken waves, less current, much more pleasant overall. And it just gets even better. As you sail past San Vicente Island, the wind is at beam. sleep here. Could catch a wink or two, but no deep sleep. We're too close to the coast and there could be fishermen. Around the island, the wind is astern. I had let out more Genoa and Galapan was at his best. Look at him doing six to seven knots with two reefs. This is like the long, relaxing downwind stretch. Only about three miles to go, but it's not over yet. This is where it gets tricky and can fool newcomers. I choose to jab early before being surprised by a freak gust from the coast. I fill my Genoa first, no need of it as the wind is at your back. Galapa is going just fine with the mainsail. Also, I make sure my boom brake is tightened.
The last mile is the trickiest. It's called the washing machine or lavadora. The wind is funneled down as are the waves, and with the current coming in and out of Mindelo Bay, you can get some rogue waves crashing behind you. It's like running down Canyon River Rapids. Once past the point, you may think you're safe. But then, a huge gust wails down the mountain and can lay your boat broadside. It's happened to me, let me tell you. I'm used to it though, and I can handle the sudden gusts with just the mainsail. And by then, I've started the motor. It's been quite a journey, man. Two days to do about 180 nautical miles to cross the archipelago northwesterly. And his passage took a toll on me in Gallopan, as well as Wendy, obviously. This was very difficult on us, and very hard on Gallopan. He's in need of care after this. Now let's just hope I have enough fuel to go and anchor and take Wendy back on solid ground, because life back in Mandelo is about to begin. It was great to have you along in this voyage. Give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you feel any value in this series. Me and Gallopin promise you a good time every Wednesday. So welcome aboard.